Today we're going to show you how to create an energy model geometry in Revit for export to eQuest. So we'll start by creating the floors, walls, and roofs. So we'll open a new project in Revit. And the first thing we'll do is change the view to an elevation so that we can change the elevation of level 2 to the height of our roof. In this case it's a single story building with a 18 foot floor to roof. Then we'll go to the Architect tab, select Floor, and create a floor. And we'll change the floor type to Exterior. Uh, if the floor type is an Exterior, it won't export properly. You can also change the construction of the floor if you would like, um, but it's not completely necessary. So we'll just create a rectangle as the outline of the floor and change the dimensions as necessary. and click the check mark and the floor is done. So the next thing we'll do is create the exterior walls by selecting wall and make sure that it's exterior wall and change the construction. Again, not absolutely necessary because you can change the construction in your energy model but it helps to do it here. And we'll change the height of the exterior walls to be um, constrained to level 2. So we just make another rectangle, trace the outline of the floor, and that's the wall. Um, next we'll make a roof by going to roof and roof by footprint. So to create the roof we just select the outline of the exterior walls and we can then change the roof construction type. We'll select a flat roof with a metal deck. And then the, uh, the odd thing is the roof defaults to a uh, 9 inch and 12 inches slope. So you'll need to select the roof in an elevation view, change the slope to 0 if you want a flat roof. Change back to the plan view and we'll create the interior walls now. So we'll click, click on wall and then change it from exterior to interior. You can change the construction again. Um, we'll just change it to an interior drywall partition. and then just draw the outlines of the walls. So next we'll show you how to add windows and doors. Uh, we've got all the walls done now. Uh, we can select window from the architect tab and since there's no windows loaded we'll have to load a window family. Um, it's easiest to insert an instance window um, fixed or open it depends on what you have in your building. Uh, in this case we have a fixed window. So once we insert it, make sure it's facing the correct way. Um, in this case it inserted backwards. We'll just click on the reverse tab and um, mirror it. So with an instance window we can change the dimensions right within the properties tab. So you can see that from this elevation view the window inserted into the exterior wall properly. Now to create a door, we'll go up to doors and load a door family. Um, there's no instance door here so I'm just going to pick a single flush door and add it to this wall. Um, you can also load another type of door from the properties tab. And I want to add a, a overhead sectional door to the back of the building here. And I'm going to change the dimensions. Um, first I'm going to change the name so I know what dimensions it is. And go ahead and click OK and insert the door where I want it. So the next thing we'll do is create spaces and zones. The first thing that we need to create is the space. So we'll go to the Analyze tab and click Space. And we'll make sure to change the upper limit of the space to level 2 so that it encompasses the entire volume. So the other thing we need to do is make sure the base offset is exactly 0 set to the floor level and that the limit offset is set to um, at least 1 foot or above the height of the roof. 
and we can click within the spaces and Revit automatically knows the boundaries of the spaces by the geometry. We can also double click on the space tag and change the name if we want to. And another helpful thing is to create a schedule of the spaces so that you can see the properties. We'll right click on schedules, create new schedule, select spaces, and select all the fields that we want to be in the schedule. So make sure you get uh, maybe area, name, and um, definitely get occupiable. Uh, we need to change the occupiable settings for the spaces so that it exports properly to eQuest. So in the occupiable column we can um, click in the checkbox and set all the spaces to occupiable. And the final thing we'll need to do is create the zones. So we'll go to the Analyze tab, click on Zone, and select the space we want associated with the zone, and click the Finish Editing Zone button. Then we'll create a schedule so that we can see the zone properties. And similar to the space schedule, uh, we we'll just go to HVAC Zone, and add the fields that you'd like to see. Make sure you get their name in there so you can edit the name within the schedule. And we'll just change the names of the zones to match the spaces. And that is the final step in creating the geometry. Uh, if you go to part two, we'll see how to edit data and export to eQuest via GBXML.